Hello everybody, Machinimax here with a new video, and this is actually a video response to the thread that MadCow recently started on the Custom Saber Shop forum. So he was asking for people to uh, share uh, their ideas or designs for different chassis that they built for lightsabers uh, using uh, MHS chassis parts. Uh, fortunately, I have two sabers in my collection which meet uh, that requirement. So uh, the two I'm going to talk about today, one is going to be um, a chassis meant for sabers using the TCSS uh, MHS parts, and the other is going to be a crystal style chamber using the TCSS chassis parts meant for a Graflex. So I think we'll start off with the uh, with the MHS based Saber uh, and then we'll go from there. So as you can see I have numerous parts uh, lying around here uh, on screen uh, but of course the main focus of this section is going to be uh, the chassis itself so I think we'll just go ahead and dive right into that. So the Sabre you see before you, again, as I said, is a full uh, MHS-based Sabre. This is actually my personal Sabre, which is undergoing some uh, modifications that I, I wish to make. This is the chassis design which goes into this saber. So let's take a look at the different parts that I utilize to make this. So first things first, we'll start right here uh, at the bottom and then we'll work our way up to the top. So right here you can see the sound card. This is a Crystal Focus version 7. Now officially in the shop, these two discs which hold the Crystal Focus in place are the same discs that are used to hold a Petite Crouton 2.0 or 3.0 in place. Even though the Petite Crouton, or rather the Crystal Focus, even though the Crystal Focus is longer than the Petite Crouton, it actually is the same in width and in height. So you can still fit a crystal focus, Plectolabs crystal focus soundboard within the chassis disc meant to hold a petite crouton. So that's what I have going on here. If you look here underneath, I have an 18500 lithium ion battery pack. And then over here on the end of the chassis, and on this side of the chassis as well, these two discs, they're meant to hold a petite crouton and a 14500 uh, stick pack. But you might be asking, okay, why the heck does he have that in there? The reason being is because I wanted to sandwich the battery pack inside of the chassis so that way it wouldn't slide around. Uh, but I still wanted to make sure that I had room to access the SD card, and I wanted to make sure that this disc wasn't a full uh, disc because this is where my switches and recharge port they were going to be in this general area here hence all these wires uh, covered up here you can see some of these wires have electrical tape on them it's because those are the ends to the battery and I don't want them shorting out on anything right now since it's out of the saber so here we have the one disc at the end and then the other disc at the other end of the battery pack and everything was measured so that way the battery would have wouldn't be crushed but so that way we also wouldn't have any uh, room to any room uh, to move around. So it's very very secure. It's not going anywhere. Um, one thing I did have to do in order to access the SD card. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see it here. But you can see I had to sand down this disc a little bit. Let me back it up a little bit. That might make it easier to see. I had to sand down a notch into this disc. I, all I did was just take um, a sanding wheel on a Dremel and I had to grind that down because I wasn't going to have enough room for me to slip my finger or a pair of pliers to access the SD card. So despite the minor modification I had to make. Um, that was pretty much all I had to do. Um, I believe I had ordered a second pair. Yeah, these two here, this disc and this disc, uh, they're the same as these two. So they're also meant to hold an 18500 and a lithium uh, and a, um, and a petite crouton or crystal focus. I just ordered a second pair because personally I felt that the extra disc would add a little extra support into the saver and then it also wouldn't be all uh, rods just going up the side. And that's all this is here. This is uh, the 440 threaded rod. That's what's holding this together and it's being spaced by the aluminum uh, 3 16th inch spacer. Uh, I got the uh, the 12 inch section which I just cut by hand using um, using a saw. And then the uh, we had the 440 threaded nuts here. To help secure the chassis, when I cut the threaded rod, I actually left these two ends right here and here. I actually left the rod pinched so that way the nuts can only thread in one direction. They wouldn't come off on this end. So right here, it's nice and secure because these two ends, when they were cut, have been pinched. So I cannot, as I can only remove these two, uh, these two nuts if I take everything else off first. 
All right, let's see here. Uh, just a couple more nuts there, just acting as a spacer, since there was only a small gap there, rather than cutting it with the uh, with the saw, rather than cutting the aluminum spacer with the saw, I just put a couple nuts on there. And then we finally work our way up here. And here we have, I forget which style of chassis this, this is. I forget which number this is. I will post uh, an annotation in the video that explains which disc number this is. But this is meant to sit inside the top of the MHS piece. This whole chassis was designed to fit within a 7-inch main body section like this one here. So I'm just going to unscrew this real quick. So this entire chassis that I designed was meant to fit within the seven inch main body section here and then be held by the mechanical pressure of whatever part I screwed on the top, which in this case is uh, one of the MHS, uh, MHS excuse me, style, um, style chokes. So then when I'm ready to insert this, all I do, I'm not going to slip it in all the way, but just so you can see, when I'm ready... It just goes right in again like I said, i'm not gonna push it in all the way because i don't want to mess with the wires right now uh but then this uh will sit right here at the very very top of the of the mhs piece you can see the little uh inner ring inside where this will sit nice and snugly and then uh once that's all inside for the speaker i just use this speaker mount so it just locks right in place between the bottom and my pommel and then also as you can see on the chassis here i connect uh, my LED via JST connectors, so that way if I ever have to remove um, the chassis or the module, I can do so without snipping any wires. And a trick that I recommend is, since this is a saber that has flash on clash, the main blade has a has the female end of a JST connector and the flash on clash has the male end. Now you can do it either which way, but that's just the way I do it. So that way I can remember, okay, so I know this is the end that goes to my main blade. This is the end that goes to my flash on clash and I won't get them mixed up when I reconnect it back, uh, back to the main body. Okay, I believe that does it for the MHS Saber. So let's go ahead and move on to the Graflex. Okay, so for this next section, I'd like folks to keep in mind that even though what I'm about to show you was uh, made with a Graflex in mind, you can still apply the same ideas and design concepts uh, behind it uh, and apply it to an MHS style saber as well. So just please keep, uh, please keep that in mind. You're not restricted to just doing this just for a Graflex. So that being the case, a little bit about this saber. This is a vintage uh, Graflex flash handle, which I had converted uh, to a Luxion saber with sound. I dressed it up uh, Luke Skywalker ESB style. Um, and like any proper Graflex, I wanted to give it a crystal chamber. So this was actually my first crystal chamber uh, saber. Now, of course, as many of us are aware, Master Yoda on the FX saber FX Sabers Forum makes an absolutely awesome crystal chamber uh, for uh, Graflex style sabers. Unfortunately for me, that was a little bit out of my budget, and I actually did want to create something custom just so that way it made the saber something a little more my own. So I decided to go ahead because I knew the TC that TCSS had uh, chassis discs that were meant to uh, be used with a Graflex, not to mention they have a uh, blade holder slash LED holder for, uh, for Graflexes as well. So let's take a look. We're not going to be able to see the entire chassis since half of it is secured in the upper half of the flash handle here, uh, but I will show an image uh, of the whole thing uh, in just a few minutes. So we're going to open this up and I'm going to expose the crystal chamber to start. So here we have, here you can see, here's the crystal chamber. If I can just get that focused on the camera here. Here you can see uh, the sound card, which is a Petit Crouton 2.0. We have here our crystal and all mounted to a chassis disc system, which I'm going to explain in just a second. We open it up a little further. I'll remove the entire bottom. I'll work from bottom to top again. So here we have the TCSS speaker mount version 4. I have a 2 watt base speaker secured inside. This chassis disc here is the uh, adapter because right now, even though this can accept the threaded rods directly, it's meant for MHS pieces. This is the adapter that will allow you to use this speaker mount inside of a... Uh, of a Graflex uh, chassis system. Here we have the recharge port, which is just kind of floating around in there right now. Of course, you know, it's all shrink wrap and protected to make sure nothing shorts. I probably could have 
uh, gotten some sort of disc that would secure that. I know there are discs that do that in uh, the Custom Saber shop, but um, I didn't really uh, design and plan that out. So hopefully that's something that um, you'll be able to improvise on, That uh, something that you'll be able to do that I did not. <laughs> anyway, moving up here, I would like to pay uh, particular attention to this disc and this disc here because this is not actually a disc that's normally sold in the store. This is actually a custom design that I had uh, Tim cut out for me. Here is an image of that design. And the way it works is I have, you can see there's three holes around the diameter of the disc. And those holes were meant to fit with the Graflex chassis discs as well as the uh, Graflex um, blade adapter uh, sold in the shop. Then you can see there, there are two... Uh, there are two holes there that are meant to hold a 316 inch rod. The reason I have that there is I slipped two 13, uh, 316 inch uh, rods in there. And that was the channels for, uh, for which I wanted my wires to pass. And lastly, you can see uh, I have that one hole there in the middle. If we go back here to the uh, actual crystal chamber, you can see here, here's the crystal mount. Now, there's numerous, numerous ways in which you, cr you can create your crystal mount. In my case, this is actually the end of a coaxial cable, the cable that you actually use to plug in your cable box to the TV. This is actually the threaded end of a coaxial cable and that's it. Like that's all I did was just slip that in there. I measured the diameter using a pair of calipers and asked him to cut a hole in the center of the disc that would be able to fit it. Simple as that. My crystal is just secured with a little adhesive in there, just a little hot glue. This really isn't a dueling saber, so even though hot glue, you know, isn't exactly the toughest or maybe the best solution, uh, this isn't going to see any uh, rough action due to the fact that it has a crystal chamber. Uh, if we work our way up here, going up the chassis, here is the chassis disc that is meant to hold a TCSS uh, 18... Uh, it's actually, this is the, yes, this is the TCSS disc that is meant to hold the 18500 as well as a uh, petite crouton. Once again, you would be able to fit a crystal focus in there if you so desired. Uh, in the case of my saver, I actually single cell hacked my PC 2.0. Now, being that this is a Graflex, the sound is, um, is a little muted. There are a few hidden sound holes that I drilled underneath the Cobalt uh, D-ring, but... Um, since it is hacked, um, there is a little bit of a volume issue, I will admit, but it's still the same collector product that you know and love. Um, then when you, excuse me, when you go up here, here you have the uh, the TCSS style blade holder. You can see it inside. So there is uh, the LED. It's a uh, tri rebel. You can see the uh, the lip here of the blade holder. I have a tactile momentary switch hidden underneath each of the red buttons. So one button is used for activation. One button is used for the auxiliary effects. And then, of course, the TCSS style uh, Graflex pins all fitting in here. And let's see what else, what else, what else? Uh, spacing this is, of course, once again, the uh, TCSS aluminum. And just for added detail, since this was going to be a crystal chamber saber, I decided that I want the visible crystal chamber section to use the brass 316 inch rod. So same thing, just the uh, just the different metal. Um, I could have used the aluminum if I wanted to, but I thought the brass would uh, would look kind of nice for a crystal chamber. Uh, I'm going to now switch over to an image of the entire chassis here so you can see what the entire thing looks like. In this image, the switches aren't attached uh, just yet, uh, but this is basically what the chassis looked like when it was ready to go into the saber. I had to solder the switches afterwards, otherwise they were going to get caught as I was uh, inserting them into the Graflex. And in that case... That should just about cover it. Uh, I really do hope this video was helpful and informative and hopefully gave you a couple ideas on how to uh, on how to build a chassis for your Sabre. Again, as Mad Cow mentioned at the beginning of this thread, like there is just numerous, numerous ways in which you can carry it out. I mean, this chassis example, for example, for the Graflex, went through at least three or four division uh, revisions before I even started to build it. I did drawing after drawing after drawing, Biggest piece of advice I can give you before you start actually building your chassis, and this is one of the biggest mad cow tips out there, plan it out. Have an idea, you know, see what you want to do, see what parts you need, plan it out, come up with a nice design, see how it works, modify it if necessary. Alrighty, folks, with that, um, I, will, uh, I will conclude by saying goodbye, so uh, please uh, take care one and all, and once again, I hope this video uh, was informative.